Hello, you with the Scan Zone, coming to you direct from Scan in Bolton, where it's pretty obvious Christmas is coming. Our army of elves are mad busy making sure you get all of our tech on time. And we've got an awesome show for you right now, packed full of cool stuff, the latest gaming releases, UK exclusives, and world firsts. up our gaming review Dishonored 2 a supernatural battle for the throne plus the computer that could save the world out of the box tech on a scale never seen before we explore the amazing potential of deep learning and don't blink or you'll miss it controlling games with your eyes another scan exclusive also on the programme is this lady, the coolest pensioner in town. She's the Scan Gran. First up, we eyeball the amazing new tech that'll enhance your gaming. It's from Sweden and it's well sick. It's made my response times a lot quicker than they were before. Uh, it's great value for money and it's surprisingly accurate too. I can see much further like FOV wise past what I would with a normal monitor anyway. Plus I can look at my cover before I press the button rather than having to physically manoeuvre my mouse around which made that a lot faster. It's made everything a lot more uh, quicker and smoother. You can rather than having to move the mouse to aim at something, it just does it as though you would in, you know, in, in real life, you'd look, wherever you look, you'd aim, and that's what you can do with the uh, with the Toby Eye Tracker. It allows me to have like a, a widescreen, well, an ultra-wide monitor experience without paying the, you know, 600 quid that is needed for that. I've just put 100 quid extra onto a basic monitor. This is amazing, to be perfectly honest with you. Great value for money. I mean, I thought it wouldn't be that compatible because I've got glasses that are quite a strong prescription, but I've had no problems at all. I found it's really accurate playing games. Once you get used to it, it makes aiming an absolute breeze. It's kind of like, well, old school cheating on Counter-Strike, realistically. You can use it to, to um, mark where you want your character to run to, and also when you're behind cover and you're aiming, you can just look where you want to aim and it'll aim there. Overall, I think the Toby Eye Tracker is a, a really good peripheral for enhancing your experience in games. It could also be quite handy in like multiplayer versus modes, things like that, competitions, just giving you an extra edge over your opponent. So it just adds an extra level of immersion, really. Well, some pretty cool kit there from Sweden, which is exactly where we're off to now to Stockholm to speak to Henrik Johansson from Toby, the world leaders in eye tracking technology. Henrik, thank you very much for joining us. Got the thumbs up there from our gamers, but could you talk us through how the eye tracker actually works? Yeah, so happy to hear. Uh, yeah, eye tracking is a, is a technology that allows uh, Game also users to uh, to uh, identify where they are looking on a computer using then an eye tracker. Um, an eye tracker consists of uh, illuminators and cameras. So we have illuminators lighting up your face, and uh, when your when the light then hit your eyes, there creates a reflection. Somewhat you can say when you take a camera and you get a red dot on your pupil, uh, we can identify where your pupil is, and by that, in intelligent algorithms, calculate out on the computer screen where you are looking. Certainly very clever. I had a go myself and it was fantastic. I wasn't so great at Deus Ex, but that's for another day. Um, the gamers there did touch upon some of the advantages that they found, but what would you say the advantages were for gamers of using the Toby Eye Tracker? A game today is, is an artificial environment where you uh, aim with your mouse or your controller, for example. But in real life, you actually aim with your eyes. So if you should hit the target, you actually look at it and then, then you shoot at the target. Um, with eye tracking, you can now then make the technology more natural and more human as we do it in real life. Um, 
so for example, one of the features that are included in, uh, in Deus Ex uh, for Mankind is an aiming gaze, as we call it. So you can actually now aim your crosshair or your aim where you're looking. So that's, of course, a clear benefit in, in a way of making a natural experience. And it also includes head tracking. When might that be advantageous? Yeah, so head tracking, um, again, uh, it's, it's uh, in the new eye tracker that, uh, that now uh, we are selling, uh, which can, uh, what we call the second generation eye tracker 4C, uh, we can do both eye tracking and head tracking. The main benefit with adding head tracking is that it becomes an even more human and natural experience because when you move your eyes, you tend to move your head as well. So the combination of eye and head tracking is very natural um, and it's proven and, and seen in many places that especially in simulator games like Arma and Elite Dangerous, there is a huge advantage when you, when you play the game and get a better immersive experience. Yeah, really clever stuff. So tell us then, what's next? Yeah, so next, of course, is uh, continuing getting uh, eye tracking into more games and giving a more human experience into more games so that uh, users can enjoy it. Uh, we are... Uh, selling the eye tracker both inbuilt uh, in uh, laptops, notebooks like from Alienware and ASO, uh, and then also as uh, the standalone uh, device, a peripheral uh, that you then can attach to your monitor. So the next steps are going broader in PC computing. Uh, we are working closely in VR and uh, also taking eye tracking into the smartphones. Fantastic. Some exciting things ahead for you, Henrik. Thank you so much for your time. I'm a big fan of the Toby Eye Tracker, which currently is available exclusively in the UK with Scan. Still to come, the computer that could save the world, or 178 grand's worth. But right now, it's time for a good old-fashioned supernatural tear-up. The game's called Dishonored 2, and this is our man, Rick Lane. In many ways, Dishonored 2 is a straightforward sequel. It takes the core concepts of the first game, in which you play as an assassin imbued with magical powers, then introduces a new location to explore, and adds in a few new abilities and gadgets to play with. But this is a little bit like saying Humanity is a straightforward sequel to Chimpanzees. At times it feels almost like a tribute to some of gaming's most cherished ideals, such as complex 3D level design and emergent play. The idea that your actions in a game can create unpredictable chain reactions that are entirely unique to your experience. But that infers that there are better examples of these things than the Dishonored 2, and honestly, I think you'd struggle to find them. Set 15 years after Dishonored, the game lets you play as one of two main characters, either Emily Caldwin, the Empress of the City of Dunwall, or her father Corvo Atano, who was the protagonist of the first game. At an anniversary celebration of the death of the previous Empress, Emily's throne is usurped by a band of conspirators led by a witch named Delilah. With the City Watch turned against Corvo and Emily for the second time, which makes you wonder why they didn't switch recruitment agencies in the previous 15 years, Corval and Emily must flee Dunwall and find a safe place to plan their revenge. That place turns out to be Karnaka, a tropical paradise of vibrant colours and dazzling architecture whose beauty is tainted by choking dust storms, rampant inequality and infestations of giant stinging blood flies. Karnaka feels like a much larger city than Dunwall. Each of the five missions set in this city is preceded by a large and exquisitely detailed hub area, complex mazes of sunbaked streets and detritus strewn alleys. In these little urban mazes, you can raid shops and sneak into offices to stuff your pockets with valuable items, visit secret black markets to upgrade your gear, or explore rooftops and apartments in search of hidden rooms with which you can improve your abilities. Whether you choose to play as Emily or Corvo, the true stars of Dishonored 2 are your targets, or more specifically, the locations that your targets reside in. Each of Dishonored 2's missions is a masterclass in level design, and at least two of them are contenders for the best virtual space ever devised. That said, there are low points too. As with the first game, the storytelling is something of a disappointment. The game rushes through its opening, taking little time to establish its characters and then leads you by the nose through a sequence of surprisingly straightforward plot points. In addition, after six exceptionally crafted missions, the finale simply isn't up to the same standard. The final act is only disappointing in the context of the rest of the game. It's still a thoroughly enjoyable mission that gives you plenty of rain to experiment with your powers. It's just not quite the climax that this game deserved. Don't let that put you off, however. For the vast majority of its running time, Dishonored 2 is a tour de force of game design. In a year which has been crammed with generally excellent games, Dishonored 2 nevertheless stands out as a particular highlight. Thanks, Rick. Scan Graham, what do you think? Epic! 
<laughs> Love it. And for Rick's extended review of Dishonored 2, plus his thoughts on the theme park thrills of Planet Coaster, just have a look for him on our YouTube channel. <laughs> Time now for your tech headlines, and Google has revealed it's on track to be 100% renewables powered by 2017. The company announced the goal last year. Google's biggest use of power is in its data centers. The 13 locations consume around 5.7 terawatt hours of electricity. The firm is now the largest corporate buyer of renewable energy in the world. Fitting a face to a name is about to get a whole lot easier with Blippar. The augmented reality business is adding facial recognition to its app, which already tells you about objects when you point your phone at them. It currently identifies and offers facts about flowers, household items and things such as famous paintings, but now it recognises people too. Famous faces are automatically added to the app and users will soon be able to upload their own faces. YouTube has been forced to deny it's changed its algorithms after the site's most popular star threatened to quit. Gamer Felix Kjellberg, known as PewDiePie, said the alleged changes had affected how easy it is to discover content. Other channels have also reported the same issue, with new videos having fewer views than older content. PewDiePie has almost 50 million subscribers, but has noted a drop of 29% in video traffic, suggesting, he says, an undisclosed algorithm change. Now, he's a gamer who's got more than 2 million YouTube subscribers, and they are the coolest computer makers pretty much anywhere. The he is Jack Frags, the they is our 3XS team. The PC itself then, very striking on first impression, and obviously the custom water cooling loop there grabs your attention straight away. This is compromised of two EK Coolstream radiators, one at the front of the case and one at the back, and that pumps the white liquid around the system to keep it cool. So that's cooling both graphics cards and CPU in a nice loop. And what are those graphics cards you ask? Well that is two Titan X Pascal graphics cards two of the most powerful cards that you can buy, and they kill games at 4K. The CPU in here is an i7-6950X 10-core with hyper-threading CPU, and it's been pre-overclocked stable to 4.2 gigahertz. So for gaming, it's gonna destroy absolutely anything that you throw at it, but also top of the line for rendering, streaming, 3D work, editing. You've just got so many cores there to use that in multi-threaded applications, it's gonna be ridiculous. As for memory, we've got a whopping 32 gig in 4x8 configuration of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 to 666MHz. The motherboard is the ASUS ROG Strix X99 gaming board. You can just about see the branding at the back there. Always been a big fan of ASUS boards and the built-in sound card on this one is the Supreme FX standard, so it's going to sound pretty good. The case is a black Corsair 760T and it's got that big open window there so you can see inside because obviously when you've got a system like this you want to see inside you can open it and swing it around very easily it just opens up with a little latch no thumb screws required there and taking a look at the back side of the case again that just pops open with a latch and we get a nice look at the cable management happening here it's very clean i have to say no loose cables it's tight looks the business not that you'd ever take the back side of the case off before we look at some gaming performance those rgb lights what's their problem well you can actually change the color of these via the aura app on the desktop this motherboard has a programmable lighting system and the leds are synced with it 4k is the target here if you're playing on a system like this at 1080p then you need your head check in so 4k it is and naturally battlefield one it's just come out it's probably the best looking game that's out right now and we've got it here absolutely maxed out at 4k what sort of frames do we get then well there it is at 4k on this system with the combo of two titan x gpus and the 6950x processor we are smashing over 120 fps on maximum details and that's just ridiculous all we need now is that 4k 120 hertz monitor for that buttery smooth gaming heaven that'd be pretty nice but really i mean that's just very impressive because if this system can do bf1 maxed out at 4k sometimes even over 120 frames per second it's just gonna crush everything else it's obscene this system is a beast 
Obviously, 4K gaming is a breeze, rendering is no problem, it looks pretty tasty as well, well put together and brilliantly executed. The only downside is that I don't get to keep it. Some more good news now for gamers. The Mirage all-in-one gaming PC is now available. Yes, the gaming hardware is neatly tucked away out of sight, but what makes this machine really special is its high-performance system, providing a premium gaming experience. The sleek all-in-one machine can also be upgraded, kit that can be updated without having to replace the whole unit. Whilst the Mirage can be customised, the Plus version comes with an overclocked Intel Core i7 6700K and NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070 graphics as standard. Coming up next, Scan's new TV ad. I'm in it in full leathers and it's epic. Unleash your inner gamer. Get a 3XS custom PC from Scan. Featuring Microsoft Windows 10. Yes, you scan. Scan.co.uk Oh, I do love that woman. And that blockbuster TV ad from Scan that you've just seen there, complete with the Scan brand, was a lot of fun to make, as you can probably imagine. If you want a sneak peek behind the scenes to find out more about how we put it all together, just visit our YouTube channel for an exclusive look. Now, as you know, we're all about pioneering tech here on the Scan Zone, and it's time now to check out this very, very special box of tricks. It's NVIDIA's DGX1, and it's the world's first deep learning supercomputer. Scan Zone's Alan Rook reports now on big tech that's making history fast. The DGX1 is a supercomputer in more ways than one. This is a machine that can solve the world's problems. It's already working on a cure for cancer. How does it do it? By taking huge amounts of data and analysing it all in the time it takes to make a cup of coffee. It has the power of 250 CPU servers, and that's the equivalent of a data centre the size of a warehouse. This supercomputer uses AI to learn how to solve problems. The DGX1 is helping companies to advance healthcare, accelerating the speed at which they can process medical knowledge to produce sophisticated and personalised healthcare plans for patients. It's already being used to discover drugs more quickly, a process which usually takes 10 to 15 years and billions of pounds. That means we can expect new, more effective treatments to be available sooner and cheaper. Solving some of the world's biggest problems really is possible. Now we have the compute power. Deep learning has well and truly landed. And joining me now to talk more about the DGX1 and the potential of deep learning, we've got Dr. Anthony Morse, who joins us from Durham. He's a deep learning specialist and he's here via the power of Skype. And joining me in the studio, we've got Donya Briggs from NVIDIA. Thank you very much to both of you. Um, first of all, before we talk about the potentials of the DGX1 and deep learning, I think it's only right, Anthony will come to you first, that we explain what is deep learning. So deep learning is, um, well, it's the most successful approach to pattern recognition at the moment. And um, over the last couple of years, pretty much everything it's been tried at, it's beating everything else that, that we've got. So what does that mean to have a system that's good at pattern recognition? Well, um, whenever you talk to Siri or Cortana or Google Voice on your phone, it's a deep learning network that is turning your speech into text. Um, it could be recognizing photos and labeling photos and saying what, what's in them or coming up with descriptions of that. 
Uh, it could be for autonomous vehicles um, to recognize where pedestrians are, where other vehicles are, where obstacles are, to look at road signs and, and try and interpret what they mean, um, that kind of stuff. Um, that's sort of the more obvious side of pattern recognition, but it can go much, it, it could be anything. So this is being used in um, diagnosing medical images. Um, this is being used in looking at um, you know, corporate data, or any, anywhere that you've got massive amounts of data, um, you can apply deep learning um, to make sense of it. Thanks, Anthony. And Don, you wire NVIDIA involved in artificial intelligence. So your viewers probably know NVIDIA best for the world of gaming and are somewhat surprised to hear us talk about artificial intelligence today. But the GPU, the graphics processing units that you find in your PC and your gaming devices are also responsible for bringing artificial intelligence out of the realms of, um, of sci-fi and into our everyday lives. Graphics and artificial intelligence are similar problems and they both, as Anthony mentioned before, involve processing lots of information at the same time. So for gaming, it's uh, rendering millions of pixels in real time. And for artificial intelligence, it's enabling the computers to uh, learn from data and be able to write software that's just too complex for, for, for people to do. If we think about it, GPU are the brains of computers, the brains of robots, the brains of self-driving cars, and deep learning is really transforming our world. There are organisations that we're all familiar with that are using artificial intelligence and deep learning today, uh, and they involve Facebook, Microsoft, Tesla Motors, and NASA. We'll come back to you, Anthony. I know that you've said the DGX1 is the perfect machine for deep learning. Can you talk us through your thoughts around that? Um, so the DGX, uh, the DGX one has eight of the the state of the art um, G, G, GPU graphics cards in it. Um, that's the P100s, um, and so they are uh, in incredibly powerful parallel processing units. Um, but in addition to that, what Nvidia have have done with the DGX1, um, and there are a few other computers doing this as well, is instead of using the PCI Express bus so that the graphics cards can talk to each other, um, they've introduced something called NVLink, which is much, much faster. So this means that the having eight graphics cards in one machine and having them all able to share information, um, with th this is kind of essential to speeding up um, the learning process for deep learning. Absolutely, nicely put. We've got Anthony's thoughts there on why the DGX is so wonderful. Uh, why would you say it's so special? So NVIDIA's DGX1 um, is the world's first um, deep learning supercomputer uh, in a box. And um, it's, we've packed everything in there that data scientists need uh, to really get started creating deep learning applications. And it's all in one single system that's equivalent to 250 conventional servers. Uh, so if you see the size of the DGX1, um, this is equivalent to the performance of 250 servers that would be in a data center. Uh, we've designed the DGX1 um, to help companies and research organizations really speed up deep learning and achieve um, you know, results as quickly as possible, uh, which essentially saves time, saves money, and in some cases will soon save lives. Couldn't have ended on a better note there. Thank you very much. I could chat to you both all day. I think it's fair to say that the possibilities truly are endless. Thank you very much for coming in and sharing your knowledge. That was the NVIDIA DGX1 supercomputer and you can find out more about this on SCAN's website. Okay, let's make everything just a little bit easier for you now. The part of the show we like to call the life hack. First up, if you think virtual reality is just for gamers, then you're wrong. Let's go to work with it too. Whether you sell cars for a living or you're an architect on the lookout for new ways to explain your ideas, HTC has developed a business edition of its Vive VR headset. So what does it do? Well, loads of stuff, but here are a couple of examples. It's great for planting people in almost real environments for immersive training that goes way beyond the classroom. Car buyers are able to experience every aspect of a new model before it even reaches the showroom. And architects are giving guided tours of homes that haven't even been built yet. This is the future. Now, our ScanZone life hack is all about making everything simple. So here's some ideas to help with those all important festive preparations. 
First up, baking. Well, we can't all be Mary Berry, but using the perfect bake can help avoid kitchen disasters. It's a set of scales with built-in Bluetooth which connects to an app on your phone. You simply put the recipe on your handheld and it tells you what to do. Just add each ingredient to the bowl and when you reach the right amount, it tells you to stop. It also times how long you should mix and bake for, so no more guessing. Getting your Christmas deckies out is an essential part of the festive experience, but if you want your home to be lit up without the fuss, list lights could be what you're looking for. Place the tubes inside or outside your house and use a remote control for 3D holographic illuminations at the touch of a button. Of course, it wouldn't be Christmas without enjoying a tipple or two, but you could have been missing a trick all these years. Whilst everyone knows red wine needs to be aerated for maximum enjoyment, not everyone knows spirits benefit from the same treatment. The Venturi Spirit Aerator sucks in air, oxygenating the spirit to bring out the true aromas and flavours. This nifty little gadget doubles as a dispenser with a built-in jigger, which pours an exact shot at the press of a button. Perfect for those Christmas cocktails. Next, we're sounding off about Pro Audio, and we've got the ideal Christmas present now for your hard to buy musician pals. Talking us through it, it's our man Tom. Thanks, Nikki. Okay, so joining me today for my choice of Christmas present for musicians is Rick from Zoom UK. And we've selected, or rather, I've selected the Q2N. Now, this is actually a video camera and it's perfect for musicians because not only do you get an action type camera but it's got a stereo mic built in yeah this is a, an evolution of our q series so the latest one so q4 and q8 then q4n and now q2n so where we've come down to a really compact size unit that you can take anywhere you know it's just so tiny so the advantage of this is that it's got a very wide angled lens on it. Yes. So a lot of the difference, especially when you're trying to record using a webcam or something like that in a confined space, you can get this a lot closer to the musician than you can with a regular um, camera. So the advantage of that is that the acoustics of the room then get diminished so you get a lot more of what we call direct sound and a higher quality sound which we'll demonstrate here with Steve and a bit of acoustic guitar. So we saw that there with an acoustic guitar, but what else is this really suitable for, Rick? I mean, it's suitable for a massive amount of applications because what we've done is we've evolved our scene menu. So whatever sort of lighting situation, if you're outdoor, indoor, concert hall, you can use it. You know, we've, we've expanded that through the series and, and now you've got many varieties that you can put it in. Also, I mean, particularly, I think what we've found is that it's very well suited to drummers. I mean, if you look up on the website, uh, the Zoom website, zoom-uk.com, you'll find there are some cuts of the incredible drummer Steve Gard and also Dave Weckl. So you can just see how clear this thing looks and the sound quality is ridiculous. I mean, that's the sound quality is the thing again for Zoom. Is, you know, we come from the H series and Zoom is about sound quality at a very affordable price, but you know, top notch. And obviously drums are a really hard thing to record because they're so loud and anyone who's tried to record um, with their, their phone in the same room as a drummer will certainly know that it overloads the built-in mic. Well, this is designed to take those kind of decibel levels, isn't it? Yeah, they all are designed, all our series are designed to take that sort of level of sound. Um, you know, it's, so it's gonna take whatever you put in 
put so at it. Th this is it. I, I really recommend this if you're trying to record at home. Also, it's got a bonus feature in that it acts as a webcam. So if you, you can connect this up via USB and directly have the audio and video feed, if you hook up something like OBS to do live streaming with, then you've got a really good sound quality that you wouldn't get trying to stream directly off your phone or your tablet. So um, Tom's top pick for Christmas for musicians isn't actually a musical instrument, it's the Zoom Q2N. Cheers Tom. Before we go, a quick look ahead to January and one of the planet's biggest ever tech events is looming. It is of course CES 2017 in Las Vegas and we'll be reporting on some massive product launches and tech announcements from there. Among a giant lineup in Las Vegas, there's a new sleep tech marketplace and it's all about things like sleep trackers and smart beds that'll help you drift off to the land of Nod, even in the city that never sleeps. Our game reviewer Rick Lane is back in January too. He'll be looking ahead to an exciting exciting year in gaming and giving his thoughts on Space Hulk Deathwing. All that in the new year, but for 2016, that's it from the Scan Zone. Keep an eye on Scan's snazzy new website and our Facebook page too for much, much more. And if you're watching on YouTube, then why not give yourself an early Christmas present and get subscribing. Keep watching to find out how to contact us. You can give us your ideas and tell us what you'd like us to do on the Scan Zone next year. Do let us know. From me, Nikki Dean, enjoy your tech and see you next time. Have a merry techie Christmas.